in order to recognize a tree, does anyone need to tell you that? Um, eventually, yeah, when I was born. Exactly. So eventually, did anyone in the Bible say that you have to worship a triune God? I'm, I'm using your analogy because you said the trunks, the trees, the leaves, yes. you know, all these things. They're all one. But eventually, like you said, somebody has to tell you that is a tree. Yeah. yeah? But that's, that's what I'm asking. Using thing. your own analogy, did anyone, because you said the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are, they are still God. Yeah. Did anyone say Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one God? These three persons are one. Did anyone say that in the Bible? I don't know. Never. This is my father in our work. Are they back? I got him. <laughs> That's my question. If he says my father in our one, do you take this word into uh, the nature of God, which is a, there is an essence or there is a purpose? Because he, say, he says, he says, he says, Christ says, my disciple and I will one. Are you going to say John 17 22, I think. Sorry? John 17, 22. 22. You can are check you it in take, the Bible. Gonna, are you going to take the disciple as, as God as well? Uh, no. So, well, you have to be consistent. I think the question is, you need to ask when he says, my father and I are one. One in what? One in what? That is a question you need to ask yourself. Purpose essence? Oh, okay. I understand what you're saying. Because it couldn't be in essence, could it? Because the father doesn't have a human flesh, like the way Jesus is. So they can't be one in nature. Kind of, but he's reincarnated. So point is that the essence isn't the essence what makes God. Yeah, but the essence of Jesus is man. No. Well, if you want to call it man and divine, it still has a human nature in it. It's not just divine, because that's why it's called the hypostatic union, because there's two natures in one person. Oh, so, you're saying that that compromises kind of that. Yeah, it, it it shows that the nature of the Father, which is only divine yeah. and no no human. Whereas the nature of Jesus is both human and divine. And you cannot separate these two natures, otherwise you would be considered a heretic, like the Nestorians. They considered it like two people, two persons or something like that, you know, that made, the, that made them heretical. Wait, do you believe that Jesus didn't commit any sins as well? Yeah, but not sinning, does that make you divine? What was the sin of John the Baptist? I don't know. Yeah, because according to the Bible, he's like the most righteous who's born of a woman. Who, John the Baptist? Yeah. yeah. But didn't, didn't you say that Mary was the... Mary is uh, one, uh, one of the righteous women uh, in, the, in yeah. humankind. God gave us a very, in the Quran, God gave a... Uh, uh, status, uh, high status. status yeah. One of the highest uh, status in the, in the woman, woman yeah. world. Okay. Well, I need to go into this. Can you, like, five minute final speech as to why... Um, Muslim is the religious Jews. I mean, look, the difference between Islam, Islam Christianity, sorry. and Judaism, the main difference is Jesus, as you know. Okay. Yeah? So, the Jews completely reject him as a Messiah, as a prophet, as messenger, as everything. Yeah. The Muslims are in between. Like, the Christians go to the other extreme. Okay. They raise him to the standard of and the level of God. The Muslims are in between the two. We don't raise him higher than the status that he actually claimed himself because he, he has been as a servant of God. He yeah. came to serve. This is clear in the Bible as well. Nor do we reject him like the Jews did. Okay. okay. So why don't you read the Bible and see what Jesus himself claimed about him? Yeah? So, no, no. so instead of going beyond what God had decreed or what God actually advocated or even Jesus what he advocated yeah. why don't you go based on that rather than going based on what other people said about Jesus Christ because if Jesus was God you know he would have clearly stated that he was a God instead of beating around the bush like the way God did in the Old Testament God, isn't that the whole point of faith what isn't that like you can't the whole point of religion is faith like blind faith you could say not really the religion is not blind faith I mean God has to reveal to you what he expects of you. Yeah. And if he's going to confuse you, like, oh, you know, until Jesus came, the Christians or whoever started worshiping Jesus, yeah, they started, at that point, they started saying, oh, he's a son of God. But before that, nobody 
in the from the Old Testament ever knew that G, uh, God was a triune being? Yes. Yes. Yeah? No, in the Old Testament, God is uh, quite clear. He yeah. says, "Please work." There's no God besides me, you know. In Isaiah, if you re if you read Isaiah, clearly says, I'm "There's the no God." Yeah. Okay? There's no God besides me. But the Christian point would be that He hasn't created another God. It is Him. Yeah, but why did he not reveal it? Why did God reve not reveal it? Did he reveal it to his mother? For instance? What do you mean timing? Are you saying the people in the Old Testament time were not ready to expect or accept? Yeah. Why, why not? Were they not human? Because you have to learn the rules from the Old Testament. You can't just dump everything in one thing. Yeah. But even in... This the, is everything that comes over time. Did, he, did Christ reveal to his mother that I'm, I'm, I'm God? Well, didn't get Angel Gabriel to reveal that. Oh, let me let me let me rephrase the question. Did anyone in the entire Bible, including the New Testament, ever worship a triune God? Um, was, yeah, because if you're worshiping God, then who you worship can't a carry. triune God? I didn't say no, no. I didn't say worship God. Of course, there are many people who worship God, yeah. including Jesus. But triune God and God are the same thing. That's no, they are not. Triune God means three persons in one. This was not something that the it's Jewish people three, believed. It's not one person that splits off into three. No, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> Why is three it person, it? one being. I don't think you've read the creed. The creed is three persons in one being called God. Yeah, okay. Okay, not, not one person split into three. But couldn't that be that would be schizophrenic or something like that, you know, multiple uh, personality disorder or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, there are people like that. It's a mental illness and they, so they act differently. No, I'm not saying that. I'm, okay. saying, Je I'm saying Jesus never claimed to be God. I kind of did though, anyway. I think I need to go now. But, uh, yeah. thank you. But, but, but what do you think of that question? No one in the Bible ever worshipped a triune God. Well, they didn't do it directly. But Even they indirectly? Know. They didn't know. No, no, I meant including the New Testament. So when Jesus came, he preached, you know. During all his preaching, he never told anyone to worship a triune God. Neither did any of his disciples worship a triune God. Yeah, but the whole point is that they're one and the same. No, but why did they not worship? You know, if, if, if you're the like, teacher, listen, listen. It's like, wait, wait, can I? Yeah, go on. Okay. So I'm saying, if someone said, oh, that's a tree. And then someone else said, oh, but the tree's, the tree's a trunk, it's a branch, it's a leaf, it's all these three different things. But then you say, oh, but I'm talking about the tree entirety. You don't have to name every individual part of the tree for it to be a tree. What has that got to do with the triune being? Nothing. Because triune, he is multiple, God is everything. So you don't have to say, oh, to worship God, you have to worship this part. Does anyone need to tell you that is a tree God. at huh? the end? Does anyone need to tell you that that is a tree? What do you mean? In order to recognize a tree, does anyone need to tell you that? Um, eventually, yeah, when I was born. Exactly. So eventually, did anyone in the Bible say that you have to worship a triune God? What's the difference I'm, I'm using your analogy because you said the trunks, the trees, the leaves, yes, you know, all one. these things. They all one. But eventually, like you said, somebody has to tell you that is a tree. Yeah. Yeah. And but that's, uh, that's what I'm asking. Using your own analogy, did anyone, because you said the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are, they are still God. Yeah. Did anyone say Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one God? These three persons are one. Did anyone say that in the Bible? I don't know. Never. And that is a key point, my friend. Throughout the Bible, you know, for 1400 years before uh, Christ, Moses came. Yeah. When Moses and all the other Israelite prophets, when they preached, none of them ever said God is a triune being. You said maybe they were not ready there. Okay, Jesus comes now in the New Testament for after 1400 years after Moses. Yeah. Yes, even he still doesn't say worship a triune being. You know, in John 7 and 3, what does he say? He says, this is eternal life that they know you, meaning the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So he, he distinguishes himself as a Christ, and he distinguishes the Father as the only true God. If the Father is the only true God, which means one person, and you know, the Father is one person, right? He's not three persons. Well, he's God. So yeah, yeah, he's God, but he's one person. And Jesus recognized him to be the only true God. So if the Father is the only true God, is there room for anybody else to be the only true God? Um, I guess, yeah. It's going some, I'm at the end of my sentence, so I can't really keep up. So. No, no, come on. You understood what I said, right? What? If I said if I said you were the only one with, um, I don't know, Max Air bag, <laughs> uh, backpack, yeah. yes? Would you then understand by that statement that other people have this Max Air night bag? 
don't understand that nobody else has a recording sequence. Yes, because I said you only you have it. The term only Exclusive. demonstrates exclusivity. Exclusive. Yeah, just like it says in John three sixteen, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Can there be other begotten Son? No. Yeah, you see how quickly you said no. But when I asked you, Jesus' statement that He says the only true God is a Father. Then you hesitated when I asked you, can there be other gods besides well, Jesus said, the Father? Jesus the Father, the Father is in me. Yeah, so and we already dealt thing. with that earlier. One, one Just like, in, you know the same chapter, John 17, which I quoted verse 3 to you. Yeah. The same chapter in John 17, 22, it says, the disciples, he prays that they are in me and I in them. And we are one. Okay. Yes? Just like you and I are one. Oh, so what is exact? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, just uh, just like um, you and I are yeah, one, me. they are also in me and we are one. Something I'm paraphrasing, yeah? So you see, this is more of a... No, it's not a literal thing. It's more like if we should all work together. Our purpose is the same. Our objective is the same. That's what it means. Um, but if it says, I am in the Father. Yeah, well, do you really think the Father is in Jesus? Really? Come on. So what are you saying? That's just, I'm saying that's a metaphoric way. Metaphoric. It means like I am from the Father in a way, just like it's in John 73. Yes, that he's the only one who sent me. Sorry, he's the only true God and he's the one who sent me. It means connection. So Jesus, you know, Jesus, when he came to the earth, yeah, he says, I've not come by my will, but by the one who sent me. So even his coming to the earth wasn't his will. It was the will of the Father. And in John 70, uh, sorry, in Matthew 7, 21, 22, 23, it tells us about... Uh, Second coming. No, it, it tells us about the will that you need to abide by, the will of the Father. Yes, he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will go to, uh, uh, will go to, uh, will have the kingdom of God, but only the ones who do the will of the... Will of the? the Father. Yes, he didn't say will of God because if he said will of God, you will have you you as a Christian will as, can say yes, it includes all the triune. But he says only those who do the will of the Father. Now, why did he not say will of the will of God or will of the Trinity or will of the of Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Because that is what Islam is all about as well. It is submission to the one true God, and that is not there's no mention of any three persons. This is a later development in in Christendom. Yeah, the church, this is the doctrine of the church in the Nicene Creed, when they when they started to read the Bible. And you know, even at that time, the Bible wasn't even canonized. It wasn't canonized until another hundred years or so. So can you imagine, after 300 years after Jesus left, they started saying, okay, this book belongs to the Bible. This book doesn't belong in the Bible. They did not even have the canonized version of the Bible until 300 years after. And they did not believe in this triune being until 300 years after as well. Uh, yeah, so, we know that for sure. Yeah, well, the Council of Nicaea, before that, no church fathers ever worshipped a triune God. No disciples worshipped, no apostles worshipped a triune God. Like I told you, no one in the entire Bible ever worshipped a triune God. They all worshipped the God of Jesus, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham. Yes? Yeah. And this is exactly what the message of Islam is as well. Worship the God of all these prophets. Do not start worshipping men because that is paganism, isn't it? When you start worshipping men, when you think the only way, what is the only way you can be saved as a Christian? Um, worship Jesus. No, there's more to that. The crucifixion. Yeah? yeah? Without the crucifixion, can you be saved? No. Yeah? You see, in both, in both cases, the worship of men and the sacrifice of a human. Are you paying attention? Yeah. <laughs> well, you should actually, because this is quite important. It can be something that is important for you in the hereafter. Yeah, no, I'll have to do something another day. Yeah. I think you should speak to him. He's much more knowledgeable in Christianity than I am. Yeah. Since just, he's not, you, can, you can see he was not sincere, because when we mentioned uh, Psalm 80 to 6, he twisted the word. You can see he was not sincere, this person. You have to read the, you have to be, read the book yourself to really read the meaning of this uh, John 10, 13. You know, when, you, when you're standing in front of, on the day of judgment, when you stand in front of God, that guy or this guy or this guy will not come to your aid. You'll be standing alone on the day of judgment. And that time, you know, you, were, you, you would have 
hoped that you were paying attention to this discussion. You might find it funny because now, but not that time. Uh, What's that? Attention. Wouldn't God give me the strength to pay attention? Well, you should, because if you're discussing, reason, at least, when you're discussing God, you're... Give a reason, at least reflect on. Yeah, no. yeah, if you're tired, I don't want to like <laughs> do it against your will. But all I want to, you to understand is that worship of God and a human sacrifice, both are pagan rituals, which God actually forbade in the Old Testament. Human Maybe. sacrifice. Yes. Yeah, but sacrificing yourself isn't pagan, is it? But it wasn't sacrificing. Remember, he was begging God to take to save him from the cross. Then he take this it. cup away from when me. He took the cross when he was carrying it. He didn't complain. He didn't say nothing. He was made to do that. Yeah, but he did it without without complaint. But what was he doing in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was on his forehead praying to God to take the cup away from him? Take the cup away. Yeah, that that didn't sound like a willing sacrifice, did it? I mean, but it could be. You can, like I, like you said, it could be metaphorical too. So anyway, I think I need to go now. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank no you problem. Great. What's your name? Uh, David. Are David. You, Very you, nice you meeting you, David. Sorry? You have a YouTube Yeah, it's called Dawa Wise. So you should subscribe <laughs> and watch this video. Yes. Oh, God. No problem. Okay, Jazakallah. <laughs> You're famous <Karen>. now. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How many views do you have?